Thank you to all the supporters of HMS Unicorn who made this online talk possible. If you would like to support the work of HMS Unicorn, then please head to www.hmsunicorn.org.uk and donate. Sailor's Song, The Shanties and Ballads of the High Seas Guest Speaker, Professor Jerry Smith Professor Jerry Smith of Liverpool John Moores University speaks about the classic 19th century shanty tradition and reveals some of the history and meanings behind different sea songs. His book, Sailor Song, The Shanties and Ballads of the High Seas, is published by the British Library and now available to purchase. Originally from Dublin, Jerry Smith is Professor of Irish Cultural History at Liverpool John Moores University, where he has published widely on the subjects of literary history and popular music. Thanks very much to Finn for, for inviting me to, to do this talk. Um, I would echo his uh, his his, his uh, thoughts about the weather. It's a beautiful evening here in Hoylake uh, uh, on Wirral in, in Merseyside, where I live, just just in that little tongue of land between the Mersey and the Dee, um, um, closer to the Dee than, than the Mersey, but it's a beautiful evening. Uh, this weather kind of came out of the blue the last couple of days, so just been trying, trying to enjoy it. Um, but I've been looking forward to, to talking to you on this subject for, for, for a few weeks um, when, since, since Finn asked me to do it. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Liverpool and the Atlantic shanty tradition. And I'm going to talk a little bit about my, uh, my, my, my book. Incidentally, you probably see the name on on my uh, my my screen is Jerry McGowan rather than Jerry Smith. Uh, McGowan is the Irish form of Smith, and and I tend to use it for my my kind of non academic uh, pursuits, uh, usually to do with music and theatre. Um, but they kind of got mixed up. My Zoom accounts, my my academic one, and my uh, my my real life one. So um, I am both Jerry Smith and Jerry McGowan. Um, mild-mannered academic by day, uh, fiendish shanty singer by night, um, amongst other things. Um, so I'm going to talk about um, uh, a little bit about this book, uh, which um, came out earlier this year. It came out in two versions. This is the, the English version, and it's called um, Sailor's Song. The Shanties and Ballads of the High Seas. And this was published by the British Library early earlier this year. And I'll I'll uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that that event and that process. The book had already come out in the United States last year, um, and it published by the University of Washington Press with a slightly different uh, cover, as you can see. Um, now this book was initially supposed to come out in April last year. Uh, I, I'd, I'd done some work. I, I work in a department of English, but I've got an interest in uh, maritime culture and maritime music in, in particular. So I, I had done a few um, articles and, and essays and chapters on the subject of sea shanties when it came to the attention of the British Library, who were at the time looking to commission a book on the subject. Um, and that was about three years ago, initially, when they first approached me. Um, and I said, yes, I was happy to do it. And we was on and off for a while and we hummed and we hawed. But eventually, about two years ago, um, they said, yes, it's on. Can you please go ahead and write it? And we will uh, organise the images. And they've commissioned a brilliant Scottish um, artist named Johnny Hanna, who's done a whole series of original illustrations, paintings for, for, for the book. Um, so it was all, all kind of set to come out in, in April last year. And then we all know what happened in, in March and April last year. So the British Library decided to shelve it for, for a year uh, or for, for however long it was going to take for things to um, approximate normality again. Uh, the Americans didn't didn't seem so so bothered about it. Uh, the University of Washington Press said that we've got it, we're ready to go with it. So they they went ahead and published it in in fall, I guess uh, you you would say, in America. Um, and um, it, it 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 came out. It's like you can see what kind of book it is. It's kind of it's it's supposed to be accessible and colourful and approachable, a bit of a kind of coffee table book. Um, um, and in those terms, you know, it was it was kind of doing doing quite well. Um, so, um, 
it, yeah, the University of Washington Press in 2020, the British Library w- had left it until this year and they were going to publish it in April 2021 with a view to catching the kind of summer festival um, season in, in the UK. If, if you don't live here, you, you, you may know there's a whole series of kind of festivals all across the summer, including a number of folk festivals. Uh, I suppose the big ones would be um, Cambridge, uh, maybe Shrewsbury um, and Sidmouth. On, on, the, on the south coast and they all have strong kind of shanty elements to them and there's also a kind of dedicated shanty festival in, in Falmouth every year so the British Library were, were hoping to, to catch that that, that, that festival uh, season uh, with the publication of the book in April and then something happened of course which, which nobody had been expecting um, and certainly not me um, and people will I, I, I don't know if you'll be familiar with this uh, but this happened Soon may the Wellerman come. Um, I, I think I may be able to um, to 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 share a, a, a version of that. I kind of hopefully I won't run into too many technical problems, but I'm going to try a new share here. Uh, this one, and see if that works. Can people see that new screen? So here is a version of uh, the Wellerman, um, which is I'll tell you a little bit more about in a moment. The name of the ship was a belly of tea. The winds blew up her bow, duck down below my belly boys blow. Soon may the Wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. She had not been two weeks from shore and down on her a right well bore. The captain called all hands and swore he'd take that, that whale and go. Soon may the wellman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. But put to see the name of... Okay. Um... New share. So if I can go back to uh, my screen there. That, uh, that song's called Soon May the Wellerman Come, and it was um, a TikTok phenomenon um, made famous by a Scottish postman named Nathan Evans. Um, like a lot of people, I suppose Nathan was a little bit bored last year and looking for things to do during, during the, the various lockdowns. And TikTok emerged uh, during those early months. It had been um, knocking around for, for a little while before that. It's a kind of Chinese social media platform in which you can share and interact with videos. Um, and it really started to take off in the early months of the first lockdown in April and May. There was a lot of people um, having having a lot of fun with it. Um, Nathan did this video of a um, a South Seas whaling ballad uh, called "Soon May the Wellerman Come," um, and people were kind of um, uh, really started enjoying it and started uh, picking up on it. Um, and people started adding their own their own uh, parts to it, their own vocals, and then as you heard, there's some music as well. There's some violin in and there's a harp version um, and if you look on the internet now especially if you look on YouTube you'll find absolutely hundreds of different versions of Soon May the Wellerman Come uh, rock versions and dance versions and all sorts of uh, all sorts of mashups um, and I, I hadn't been aware of this phenomenon um, until about that week in between Christmas and New Year when um, I got an email from somebody at the New York Times who said, uh, we understand you've brought out a book on, on sea shanties. What do you think of this um, Wellerman phenomenon? And I said, what Wellerman phenomenon? And uh, so we went ahead and uh, they got in touch and we did an interview anyway. And obviously as part of the research for the interview, I had to look it up and find out more about it. And I don't know if you remember, if you, or you may, have, you may have missed the whole thing, but it was all over social media um, in in those um, the, the, the December and January. Uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber did a version. Um, the, the Take That did a version. Everybody did their own version. And uh, Anton Deck in the UK, kind of popular entertainers, they they did a version. So it was it was all over the place. And the British Library decided at this point that this was too good a thing to miss out on, and they needed to catch the the Wellerman wave, the 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 the, uh, the, the shanty wave. So they rush released um, the book, 
the the British version of the book in um, at the end of February uh, this year. Although uh, there weren't any kind of retail outlets open um, for face-to-face transactions, they still wanted to have the book out out there and its profile uh, being being kind of established. Um, so that that book went out, and that led to, to to more interviews. And sort of, I've been doing a lot of stuff um, uh, talking about uh, about about the book and about the Shanty tradition. And I guess in some senses that's where um, my, my Finn and uh, the HMS Unicorn would have would have found out about, about about me as well and asked me to kind of contribute this 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 talk. So, well done, Nathan Evans, uh, for for raising my profile. Um, um, he, he's, he seems to be a really nice young man, but by the way, and he's he's obviously a very good singer. So um, I'm happy to. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the Weller Man uh, presently. Um, but if you remember uh, January, uh, going back to January, this was the kind of thing that was all over. Um, uh, the internet at the time. Sea shanties are more searched now than at any other time in Google history. Uh, that was Google Trends in January, January the 12th uh, of this year. So sea shanties were just, um, I mean, they'd never gone away. Uh, people had always sung sea shanties, but it was very much a kind of niche minority pursuit, shall we say. Uh, Polygon said that TikTok is making sea shanties big again, also on the 12th. Uh, the BBC Radio 3 wanted to know why are sea shanties trending on social media. Um, and I did an interview for BBC Radio Scotland just around that, that time, who'd obviously picked up on, on sea shanties and the fact that it was a Scotsman who, who had uh, kick-started the new trend. The New York Times um, published everyone singing sea shanties or are they whaling songs? And again, that that's that's a... That was the title of the interview that I did with the C with the, with the New York Times, in which, and I'll, again, I'll talk a little bit more about this in a bit. That I had to point out that the sea shanty that everybody was celebrating as the the the, the Kickstarter for the the sea shanty phenomenon was not actually a sea shanty. It, it was a whaling ballad, um, and I, I I didn't mind the fact that it was a whaling ballad, and I just was excited that people were singing were talking about and enjoying maritime music again <clears throat> but apparently this this became a big thing and I, I saw subsequently all over the internet and on lots of platforms to which i hadn't even spoke uh, people were saying professor rubbishes sailors or posties um claim that he's singing sea shanties and of course nothing of the kind had taken place um, but I'll come back to that again in a bit. Uh, the Independent um, said how the return to the sea shanty became the most unexpected viral trend of 2021. I guess we'll all look back on on um, on, on on the pandemic and our time during lockdown uh, and and the kind of things that we got up to, the things we got up to during during that period. Um, but I think sea shanties will certainly feature. Uh, as one of the kind of trends when people are doing uh, overviews of the period in five or 10 years time, and they'll say, do you remember the sea shanty phenomenon of December 20, uh, 2020 and January 2021? Uh, and so on and so on. The Guardian kind of uh, caught up the, the true story behind the viral TikTok sea shanty hit uh, they, 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 they published on the 15th of January. So this was the context within which the British Library uh, had their emergency editorial meeting and said, we've got to get these books, which are sitting in a, um, uh, uh, a building somewhere in Oxford. Uh, we've got to get them out uh, uh, into, uh, onto Amazon, at least, um, and, and, and for sale. So um, that's, a, that's all I want to kind of talk about, about the, 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 the background to the book um, so far. I'm going to go on and talk a little bit now about sea shanties themselves and, and try to, to explain what, what I understand um, the, 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 uh, the, the tradition of the sea shanty to, to be and how, how, how it works. Um, first of all, a sea shanty is usually a work song sung at sea. Um, and it's a song sung to help um, people men working at sea on board large wind-powered vessels during the 19th century by and large. I think people probably have always sung at sea um, since as long as our species has been going to sea. Uh, that's obviously just speculation, but, but certainly the benefits of singing 
uh, as an aid to work seem to suggest that it, it may have always been uh, deployed or employed in some way or other. This is what differentiates a, a sea shanty, by the way, from a ballad. Um, you couldn't sing Soon May the Wellerman Come while you were pulling a rope. Um, it, it, the, the sea shanty works um, as a kind of... Um, as a kind of call and response uh, song um, uh, with somebody singing the first line, uh, a, a gang of men, a gang of workers singing the second line and all doing the same uh, action at the same time. And that's not what happens in, in Zoom May the Wellerman Come. That's got a very straightforward ballad format of verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Um, the word shanty, uh, there's a little bit of a dispute about its its origins. Most sources, most authorities seem to think that it probably came from the French word chante, uh, meaning to sing. Um, it's a possibility that it could have come from uh, a, a word shanty, which is a, a refers to a mobile house found in the West Indies. Um, shanty workers, the shanties in, in, in the Caribbean, they would pick up their houses and carry them to where um, whatever job they had to do, whatever work season uh, that, that was, was, was happening at that time. And then when that work was finished, they would pick up their houses and move it to another part of, of the island in order to catch another work season. Most authorities, as I say, uh, seem to favour the, the idea that it came from the French uh, to sing. Um, the shanties that we're familiar with really started to, 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 to um, uh, evolve uh, or emerge uh, after the, the end of the Napoleonic Wars in 1815, because that was the period uh, when the Atlantic trade started to open up really, really strongly. Um, the, the world had been kind of, for, for 25 years before that, ever since the French Revolution, things had been, uh, the, the world and trade had been had, had been difficult. After this, and then things became more uh, possible. And a number of shipping lines began to emerge to service that transatlantic trade. Um, one particularly popular line uh, would run between Liverpool and New York. And a number of the commercial concerns had bases both in Liverpool and New York. Uh, Liverpool was sometimes re referred to as the kind of gateway to, to the Americas. Um, lots of people would make their way to Liverpool in order to get to different parts of the world. Uh, and that Liverpool, New York, Liverpool line became particularly popular and it features very strongly in the, in, a, in the lyrics of a lot of the shanty traditions. A lot of the, the, the commercial uh, maritime sailors, um, um, the merchant sailors rather, they, they, they were, uh, a lot of the time they were Irish uh, and they, who, who had emigrated to Liverpool or New York and they were the ones who plied that, 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 uh, that route and they, they brought all their um, musical resources um, to, to the invention of shanties. Uh, shanties seem predominantly or, uh, to be sung on merchant vessels rather than Navy vessels. The Navy operated fairly strict protocols uh, and rules about, um, about work, how it should be done. Sometimes there were fiddlers on, on, on Navy vessels to help, especially with um, things like turning the capstan to raise the anchor. But by and large, um, it, it, it was uh, it, it, it was ship shape in Bristol fashion, um, and uh, there was a very kind of strict um, set, set of, of rules in place. Whereas the the advantage on board the merchant vessels was that both the the the, the officer class and the owners realised that singing actually was was beneficial for for the for the faster operation of the ship. The sailors were working better. They were working more efficiently. They were less prone to, to feeling aggrieved or to, to having the morale drop um, if they were all kind of singing along uh, with, with each other. And it was clear that, 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 that the shanties helped the job because everybody was doing the same thing at the same time. Um, and this was a better use of energy rather than just having a bunch of guys, you know, variously pulling on, on a rope or pushing a, a, a capstan. Um, so, yeah, predominantly sung on, on, on merchant vessels. Um, the economic context was that, you know, the, the ships just grew in size after, uh, after the, uh, 1815. Uh, the large kind of three-masted uh, 
clipper ships uh, with increased cargo capacity, increased kind of passenger capacity. But it didn't particularly make much sense to have bigger crews. It didn't make commercial sense. So the ships were getting bigger, the crews were staying the same size. So they needed to be working more efficiently. Um, and that was one of the contexts within which the Shanti evolved as an aid to work. Um, the, the Shanti's the tradition really it comes into its heyday about 1830 with the emergence of the kind of American clipper ships. Um, uh, and then it it's kind of reaches its heyday really around about 1850 um, with, with the kind of predominance of, of, of British uh, shipping, British uh, merchant shipping. But all this time kind of steam is growing um, in, in importance. Um, uh, and um, steam is, is seen as more reliable and, and more efficient um, means of, of uh, transatlantic uh, transport. So really by about 1865, certainly by the 1870s and definitely by the 1880s, um, steam has, has triumphed as, as the kind of predominant uh, means of, of, of transport. This is not to say that uh, wind powered vessels were, were not still used. Indeed, they were still being used well into the 20th century. Um, really up until the, uh, the, 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 the Second World War, but they, they'd started a slow decline. Um, and that was clear um, from, from just after mid-century. From about 1880s, when this became clear, the shanties themselves began to be collected, uh, mostly by kind of middle-class collectors who were interested in, in British and American, in particular folklore. They were interested in crafts, in, in ballads, in um, um, agricultural uh, traditions and pastimes and so on, but also interested in the shanties. Um, and it was realized that these shanties, as they were being sung less and less, that they were soon going to, to disappear. The original context within which they had emerged and developed was going to disappear. So as part of a kind of great folk movement towards the end of the 18, uh, towards the end of the 19th century, um, the shanties begin to be collected by individual collectors who are doing field work, uh, as it were. They're going out to kind of port towns, they're finding retired sailors, and they're uh, asking them to, to reproduce their, their um, lore, their, their, uh, their shanty store. Um, lots of these collectors are, are pretty well educated, so they're able to annotate the, 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 the melodies and, um, as, as they hear them. Um, they're also pretty polite and with, uh, as with a lot of folklore, there's a certain amount of kind of censorship going on. You can imagine these, these crews in the middle of the Atlantic in the 19th century, all men, um, most of the time, sometimes women snuck on board uh, as, as the shanties and the ballads themselves uh, to tell us. But predominantly it's a very male environment and they're singing about what they consider to be very funny male pursuits, a lot of sex, a lot of filth, um, and so on. This didn't translate very well for the for the middle class collectors, who either there was an element of self censorship going on by the by the original sources themselves, or the lyrics themselves were being censored and replaced with with things that uh, uh, the the collectors thought was more acceptable. Um, and that's kind of remained a kind of thorn in the side of shanty folklore all the way down to the present. Um, e even with this book. Um, you know, um, I'm producing lyrics that are reproductions of reproductions of of censored reproductions a lot of the time. And certain people will say, well, that's not the real thing. You know, there, there are books out there which you can buy, which offer you, as they claim to be, uncensored um, versions of the original shanties. Whether they are or not, I, I, I don't know. Um, but it remains a kind of difficult point, not only in shanty uh, research, but in all kind of folklore, uh, to be honest. Um, how do shanties work? Um, well, I'm on board the, the um, wind powered vessels. There's, there's a, a, a variety of um, onboard tasks which have to be um, performed. Most of these are pulling or pushing tasks. You're either pulling uh, ropes, uh, heavy halyard uh, ropes, in in order to, um, to to raise a sail, for example, or the, you're, you're pushing, as in that picture there, you're pushing a capstan in order to raise an anchor, um, or sometimes you can be pushing a pump in order to to, to pump out the uh, the um, 
the bottom of the boat, the, the water that's collected there. Uh, there's also kind of holy stoning, which is kind of polishing the deck. Um, and there's different kinds of pulling and pushing uh, that, that, um, that, that the different jobs required. And this works best with concerted action. Um, you know, if everybody's performing the same thing at the same time, then the job in question has a better chance of being successfully uh, undertaken. The person who organizes this is, is called a shanty man. And this was generally a kind of experienced, trusted, uh, usually slight, maybe slightly older member of, of the crew who had um, who knew the way the ship worked, who who knew um, who kind of offered a kind of conduit between the officer class and the the uh, the sailors themselves, uh, and who knew what songs would work for different tasks. Um, so the shanty man would be told um, what what job needed to be done. He would look about the job. He would think about the job, and then he would decide which shanty to sing, and he would announce this with some kind of outlandish. Uh, cry uh, to the rest of the, the the crew, who would then gather in order to 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 um, to get ready to commence the the job. Then he would sing the front line, the first line of the shanty. They would all sing the response line. He would sing the third line, and then usually the work would commence around line four or around line six, which everybody is now prepared. And somewhere within that that line. That, that fourth or sixth or eighth line, there's a point of emphasis in the rhythm. And um, on that point of emphasis, everybody does the same thing at the same time. They either pull or they push. And uh, lo and behold, this actually makes the, 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 the jo a job which may have seemed kind of impossible or very difficult, it made it seem easier. And somehow, that's not to say that it wasn't very difficult. Uh, these jobs were very difficult. It was a very um, difficult, dangerous uh, environment. Um, but um, the, 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 uh, the singing of these shanties was one of the things that helped the crew get, get, get through. I point out again that shanties are not ballads and ballads are not shanties. Uh, the sailors love to sing, apparently, like in a, you know, typical of an, of an oral culture, when you, you need as much entertainment as, as you can. They sang ballads off, off duty. They sang hymns. They sang uh, music hall hits. They sang so classical music, arias and so on. They sang whatever they, they, they could. But they, you, they reserved the shanties for... Um, for 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 work, and they were quite superstitious about this as well. Um, just as you know, somebody would be told off for whistling at sea, and so somebody would be told off for singing a shanty when they were not actually working. Um, so um, a little bit more elaboration on how the shanties actually work. Have a look at this line here, which is a line that uh, Cecil Sharp, uh, the, the great kind of folklorist, collected from a sailor sometime in the uh, first decade of the 20th century. I sell brooms, squeegees and swabs. A typical American line, you know, if you do sell brooms, squeegees, squeegees and swabs, fair play to you. That's uh, that's fine. But what is it? Uh, how does it work here? If we think about that line in relation to an underlying rhythm, uh, say a 4-4 four, four rhythm that has these beats, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Now, if we try and scan that line using that rhythm, we end up something like this. One and two and three and four and I sell brooms, squeegees and swabs. I, I sell Brooms, squeegees and swabs. I sell brooms, squeegees and swabs. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Or you can you can kind of change it around a little bit. You can you can kind of put the uh, I sell at the end of the the line so it comes in on the four and, and it would go one and two and three and I sell brooms squeegees and swabs. Now, if you can imagine the, the work crew with that line in their heads and everybody's getting ready for swabs, the brooms and the squeeze 
give them a little bit hint of of how things are 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 are, are panning out, what the pace of the rhythm is. Um, but they know that once swabs comes around, everybody is expected to do the same task in the same way. I sell brooms, squeegees, and swabs. Or, or you can scan that line using a 12-8 um, uh, uh, time signature. So a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four. I sell brooms, squeegees, and swabs. I sell brooms, squeegees, and swabs. Um, so it, it, it doesn't matter what the, what the kind of underlying, you know, how the, the disposition of the different um, um, consonants or, or, uh, um, uh, are. All that matters is, is where the emphasis comes in the line so that everybody knows um, uh, that, that they will be doing the same task and the job will be performed more efficiently. Um, that's the kind of Liverpool connection, which I, I could talk a little bit about. Um, Liverpool looms very large in the in 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 the shanty tradition because it looms large in the kind of 19th century maritime imaginary, uh, because it's such an important city which really kind of uh, services the 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 growth and development and the success of the British uh, overseas imperial um, project. That Liverpool you know, begins, you know, um, it, it it kind of becomes one of the most important cities in in the empire. In the 18th century, it 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 had continued to grow. Um, it had a trade based on sugar, tobacco, and although it doesn't like to remember it so much these days, on slavery as as well. Obviously, it's close to the heart of the industrial revolution, to the great kind of industrial um, heartlands of L Lancashire and, and and Yorkshire. So it's servicing that. Um, very, very, very closely. Um, venture capitalism produces an extensive system of dry and wet docks, about eight miles of, of docks um, along the, 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 the seafront, the, the riverfront of the Mersey. Um, um, and this facilitates a lot of trade coming in. And uh, obviously the Mersey uh, and its geo, uh, geographical features, having a deep uh, channel to allow large ships to enter was very important as well. Um, Liverpool developed very close links with uh, U.S. cotton ports all down the e east coast um, uh, and around to, to the Gulf um, uh, ports as, as well. Uh, a lot of the sailors knew these these towns very 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 well, and they sailed between them frequently. Um, Liverpool developed a large in multinational population really before the, uh, lots of cities in, in, in perhaps with the exception of London uh, did um, but certainly there's a lot of Irish there already even before the Great Famine of the 1840s uh, there was a significant African population uh, there and there was the first European Chinatown uh, was in Liverpool as well so Liverpool becomes a very important kind of uh, uh, idea with, within maritime discourse around the world, um, uh, both in terms of its its trade, but also in terms of its kind of its sailor town, its its kind of um, its civic features as well. Um, and that's kind of stayed as part of Liverpool's uh, strong and enduring maritime heritage down to the present um, day. It's Liverpool still really considers itself a kind of city apart in some ways, certainly a city on the edge uh, with a problematic relationship uh, with its um, hinterland. Um, I'm going to try and put a little bit of flesh on this now. I'm going to try and sh play you a, a shanty. Um, um, and this is a very famous one called Blow the Man Down, which is set in Liverpool. Paradise Street is still uh, still there. And this tells the unfortunate story of a, a sailor uh, rocking into town off a uh, a, um, uh, a, a ship that's, that plied the eastern uh, seas rather than the Atlantic and who falls foul of a, uh, a policeman with, with no imagination. Um, so you'll know this one probably quite well. Um, I'm just going to play a version of it here. Please let me know if you can't hear this. A big Irish copper I happen to meet Give me some time to blow the man down Oh, blow the man down, bullies, blow the man down Tell me way, hey, blow the man down 
And blow the man down, bullies, blow the man down. Give me some time to blow the man down. He said, you're a black baller by the cut of your hair. Tell me way, hey, blow the man down. And you're a black baller by the clothes that you wear. Give me some time to blow the man down. I said to the policeman, you got me all wrong. Tell me way, hey, blow the man down. I'm a fly. Fish sailor, home from Hong Kong. Give me some time to blow the man down. Now you've signed on some packet that flies the black ball. Tell me way, hey. And so on. Um, so you, you may know that one. It's been sung in, in many different versions by uh, many bit different people uh, over, over the years. Um, black baller refers to the black ball line, um, which was one of those. Uh, commercial concerns coming out of Liverpool uh, in in the years after the um the, the, the Battle of Waterloo. Um and as I said there are many, many different versions of this. Um uh, I, I I suggested that the Shanty Man um would 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 sing would continue singing lines until the job was completed. This meant that he had to be quite inventive, although he had he could be quite sneaky as well. And and what we find in the Shanty Canon is that a lot of the the phrases and a lot of the lines are kind of interchangeable. As long as they're kind of scanned right, then you can you can take a particular line and you can put it into a a, a, a shanty with a different melody, um, and that that's that's fine. So the, the stock figures are you know the the black ball line, the uh, the policeman, Sally Brown um, is another character we're going to hear about in this next one. Um, so. Uh, so the 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 shanty man could be quite inventive. This didn't mean that he couldn't be kind of inventive as well, and so he could make up lines about particular members of the crew, or particular cities, or ports, or particular people. Um, and then once this was heard once, was sung again, it could become incorporated into the canon as part of that kind of folk process, uh, where, whereby these these. You know, this material is not owned, it's not authored in that sense, uh, which makes me kind of wary of any attempt to try and preserve its original or real um, uh, identity. I think it can, they kind of circulate uh, because they weren't kind of authentic at the time. They were never, never written down by the sailors themselves. That's a process that happened subsequently. This is another uh, quite famous Liverpool um, shanty. Uh, um, but sung in Liverpool or about Liverpool, but it's got lots of uh, other versions as well. I stepped on board of a Liverpool liner. Hey, roll and go! And we rolled all night and we rolled all day. Gonna spend my money along with Sally Brown. <laughs> Sally Brown is a nice young lady. Way, roll and go. And we rolled all night and we rolled all day. Gonna spend my money along with Sally Brown. Uh, so you can see a clear example there of where the uh, the action would would take place during that uh, that that call and response um, shanty. Uh, first time I heard this, I heard it by an, an Irish band um, who who did it with music behind it. The shanties themselves were uh, a cappella; uh, they, they were sung without accompaniment on board ships. But that hasn't stopped people um, kind of setting them to to music uh, in in uh, ever since. And the first time I heard this, um, it was sung by a, a band called Sweeney's Men, and I heard what I, I thought was a little kind of um, reggae lilt in it. And I, I kind of, as I found out more about the shanty and found out that it actually came from the West Indies, I know that, that reggae only really started in the late 1960s um, as a particular kind of product of, of a number of previous popular music genres in, in, in Jamaica at that time. But I kind of was wondering about where the kind of the little skanky um, lilt came on from in, in, in that shanty. So when I, I kind of recorded a version of it, I tried to kind of think about it uh, uh, as a reggae. I 
ships on board of a Liverpool liner. Way, hey, roll and go. And we roll all night and we roll till day. Gonna spend my money along with Sally Brown. Brown is a nice young lady Way, hey, roll and go And we roll all night and we roll till day Gonna spend my money along with Sally Brown and so on so uh, whether that works i don't know but it was it was a lot of fun uh, to to think about and to to uh, to, to record um so um there are other shanties uh, Liverpool shanties. Um, there's, I said, there's, in the book here. There's 40 shanties uh, and and 10 sea ballads, and a lot of them have have a Liverpool connection. But but any ports, uh, you know, you can you can replace Liverpool with Amsterdam, with Rotterdam, with London Town, with Cardiff Town, uh, perhaps even with Dundee Town, um, uh, depending on where you're going or where you're coming from. Uh, this is a famous one from the Civil War when um, 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 a, a Confederate. Uh, uh, warship was built in Liverpool, funded by Liverpool Capital. Um, this is a really interesting uh, one, a Liverpool sea shanty called Clear the Track, Let the Bull Giant Run, which we seem to think has come from Ireland initially. The melody um, has, uh, has has links with, with um, uh, a, a traditional Irish march and then makes its way over to Mobile, uh, Alabama, um, and from there into the kind of hinterland of, of America where it's picked up by railroad workers and it becomes a, a work song for um, slaves working on, on the railway in the years before the Civil War. And then it's kind of moved back to Mobile again where it's picked up again by the sailors and then it becomes a shanty uh, a, again. Um, so it has a really interesting career. Um, clear the track. And it goes a little bit like this. Oh, the smartest packy that you could find. Ah, hey, ah, ho, are you most done? Is the old wild cat of the swallowtail line? Clear the track and let the bull giant run. With me hairy jig in a jaunting car. Ah, hey, ah, ho, are you most done? Eliza Lee all on my knee. Oh, clear the track and let the bull giant run. Uh, yes, that's the musical version. Oh, the smartest packy that you could find. Ah, uh, hey, ah, ho, are you most done? Is the old wild cut of the swallowtail line. Clear the track and let the bull giant run. With me hey, riggy jig in a jaunting car. Ah, uh, hey, ah, ho, are you most done? It lies a Leo on my knee. Oh, clear the track and let the bull giant run. No and so on. Um... Yes, it's a, um, another one I've done with uh, the Shanty group that I sing with. We thought that if um, uh, the Shanties were very eclectic forms and they took their inspirations, their lyrics, the music from different places, well, then it would be possible to to shantify um, a different uh, the different songs. Um, uh, people are always looking for new new material, new repertoire uh, with, with, in the kind of limited world of, of the shanty band, uh, because um, you can certainly write new ones, and the band that I sing with have have, have written new shanties. Uh, but this was a kind of experiment that I, I couldn't possibly comment on its success. Dear sir or oh madam, will you read my book? Took me years to write it. Will you take a look? Based on a novel by a man named Lear And I need a job, so I wanna be a paper bag writer Paper bag writer Paper bag writer Oh, I need a job and I wanna be a paper bag writer And so on, so on So, um, yes, as I mentioned, this is the, the, the full shanty is the shanty choir that um, I started at uh, at uh, Liverpool John Moores University about three years ago uh, now. Um, and you can see there we had a fairly modest uh, um, uh, road of people who, who uh, were interested in, in singing shanties. I'm interested to see if after the Wellerman phenomenon that, that number goes up 
and whether people think it's a little bit cooler now uh, than than it than it used to be. But certainly, we we kind of enjoyed. Um, it's you know any kind of singing is so good for you, um, so good for your soul and for your for your mental health, and you know that's kind of very well recognised now. Um, and these songs are very simple, so uh, we have people uh, singing who wouldn't consider themselves to be to be very strong singers or who can be quite shy otherwise, but who are very happy to join in and and to sing along in a in a kind of chorus with other people taking. Taking, to taking the, the kind of shanty man's ro ro role uh, from time to time, um, and it's been so much fun. It brings people together from different different um, backgrounds, different countries. Uh, it's a very international, global tra tradition. The shanty tradition as well. I mean, I've only touched on the anglophone tradition, but there are very strong. Um, shanty traditions in places like Poland, uh, which has a, an enormous shanty festival e every year, and France as well. Fran France is very proud of its uh, maritime musical tradition. Uh, Germany, uh, the Netherlands, uh, Scandinavia, um, and so on. So it's a, it's a fascinating world, um, uh, and I'm really glad that um, the Wellerman came along and gave it its moment in the sun. Um, I think that's probably all I wanted to say for the moment, Finn. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing and then I'm going to um, let you take over and see if there are any questions that anybody wants to ask.